So in the previous video, we saw that when we had functions that took on the form as follows, where we had something like f of x equals to x plus 4, we said that we always formed a straight line. Now we're going to examine a little bit closer and we're going to really start to study what a straight line actually is. Well, we know what it is, but we're going to understand different mathematical properties about it. So very seldom are we actually going to use the notation f of x. That's just when we do an introduction to functions. Most times we're just going to call it y. So we need to get used to the idea that anything that looks like this is a straight line, as well as this one over here. And so is this one. This one's just a little weird because it has the 2 over there, but we could easily get rid of that by just dividing by 2. So now people have been studying the maths behind straight lines for many years, and in grade 10, also grade 9, and then all the way up to grade 12, we're going to have to study straight lines and the different properties of a straight line. So I want you to think of a straight line as having two main parts, okay? So let's say we've got this 3x plus 4. I want you to think about this part over here as one part, and this 4 over here as the other part. Now, this 3 over here, the number that goes in front of the x, that's going to be the gradient of the line. And if you've studied analytical geometry before, which is a grade 10 chapter, but different schools do different chapters in different orders, you would know what the gradient of a line is. Well, if you haven't, the gradient of a line tells us how steep it is, okay? So whether it's steep, whether it's not that steep, imagine going on a hike, you know, so some hikes would be really steep, others wouldn't be that steep. Then this number here is we, what we call the y-intercept, okay? So mathematically what that means is if you have a straight line drawn on a x and a y graph, it's the point where it cuts this y-axis, okay? And so to generalize even further, you need to think of a straight line as having the following equation, y equals to mx plus c. That is the straight line template. So m is the number that represents the gradient, and C represents the y-intercept. So if we had to look at these two equations over here, we could say that this first one's gradient is 3, so the gradient is 3, and its y-intercept is 6. This one's y um, gradient would be minus 2, because that's the number in front of the x, and its grade and its y-intercept, sorry, would be six. However, this line's gradient is not going to be four because that gradient y-intercept method only works when y is alone. Now that is very important. So let's get y alone by dividing by two. So we'll divide everything by two. Now that we have y alone, we call this the standard form of a straight line. This two is now going to be the gradient, and that four is now going to be the y-intercept. So I want you to carefully analyze these three straight lines which have been drawn on, a, on Excel, which is a I want you to have a look at these three lines which have been drawn on the computer and each one of them's equation is written over here. So the blue one, if I just write that a little bit bigger for you, its equation is x plus 1. So there is an imaginary 1 over here and so it tells us that its gradient is 1, okay, and its y-intercept is also 1. So notice it goes through the y-intercept here at 1 and that makes sense because this is 0 and this is 2, so halfway would be 1. Then the orangey red graph has the equation y equals to 2x plus 1. So its gradient is 2. Now because it's got a bigger gradient than the blue one, it means it's slightly steeper. And you can see it's steeper. If, that, if, the, if this was a hike and if this was a hike, the, the red one is slightly steeper, right? And then the gray graph has the equation y equals to 3x plus 1. And so that also goes, has a y-intercept of 1, and so it cuts through there. But look how steep its gradient is. Because it's got a gradient of 3, it's steeper than the other two. And then having a look at this one over here, all of these lines are going downwards. Now that we can notice very quickly from the equation when there's a negative for the gradient. A negative gradient just means that it's going downhill, whereas a positive gradient, like what we saw in the previous three lines, it goes upwards. Okay, 
Now the blue one has the equation y equals to minus x plus 1. So its gradient is minus 1. So the steepness is going to be 1, and the minus just tells us that it's going downhill. The orangey red one has the equation y equals to minus 2x plus 1. So the minus just means it's going downhill, but the steepness of that line is 2. And then the gray one is going to be y equals to minus 3x plus 1, where the minus just tells us that it's negative, but the 3 tells us the steepness. And so you can see that the gray one is the steepest, right? I mean, imagine you were rolling down that hill on a bicycle compared to the red one and compared to the blue one. The, the gray one, you would go the fastest because it's steeper. Notice, however, all of them have a y-intercept value of plus 1, plus 1, and plus 1, which means that they all cut at the y value of 1. And then for the last part of this video, I just want you to analyze these three graphs. The blue one has the equation y equals to x. And so you can imagine there's a little 1 in front there. So its gradient is 1. It doesn't have a y-intercept because, well, it does, but it's plus, you can imagine there was a plus 0 there. So it goes right through the y value of 0. Then the orange graph has the equation y equals to x plus 1. So its gradient is also 1, but it's got a y-intercept value of 1. And there we can see that over there. Okay, And then the gray graph is y is equal to x minus 1. So its gradient is also 1, but it goes through the y-axis at minus 1. And there we can see that over there. Notice that all three lines are parallel, or they are like railway lines. And this is a phenomenon that takes place when lines have the same gradient. If they have the same gradient, then they are parallel.